Ladies and gentlemen, this is Stephen Werner with Lawn Buddy, and welcome to Lawn Theory. We are on episode three, and I'm joined today with Aaron Tiffany. Aaron, thank you so much for for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So we've known each other for about a year, but go ahead and for those those listeners who may not know you, tell them what you do and kind of a little bit about your background. Yeah, I uh, have been doing lawn care for about four years now and kind of started a little late uh, in my life. I just turned 40. So, um, in my mid thirties, I guess I was kind of having a midlife crisis among other things, but yeah, I used to actually be in pastoral ministry, worked in the church, uh, for about 10 years. And we kind of moved here to, well, we did move here to help plant a church and that's a whole nother conversation, yeah. but, uh, just kind of realized I needed to step away for a season And so while I was helping plant the church, I started doing lawn care, just kind of on the side. And as I stepped away from the church work, uh, just have grown um, my lawn care business into full time. And so just doing it every day and really enjoying it. There you go. In uh, every mowing season, there's obviously a season and every life there's a season. So Mm -hmm. the uh, glad that you've been directed here. Does that um, where your company name has some deriv- derivatives from for Creation Care? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I named it Creation Care definitely as kind of a uh, theological, um, very purposeful name. One of my goals, and I, I guess I wouldn't say I'm, I'm fulfilling this right now, but I definitely want to be mindful of the environment and creation and steward it well, as we've been um, called to do. Uh, so yeah, creation care is definitely, uh, something I want to do and, uh, want to kind of move in that direction, especially with a lot of the battery powered equipment that's coming out these days, things like that right now, um, uh, still using a lot of gas mowers, obviously, but like handheld equipment, uh, chainsaws, hedge trimmers, string trimmers, definitely moving towards battery and just trying to, uh, be, be mindful of, uh, what the resources uh, we're using. So yeah, the and they've come a long way. I know. Yeah. If we look back to when we started the company in 2016, the battery powered handheld equipment was garbage. The uh, it was it was getting there, but it was right. it was not great. And now you've got some folks like Makita has some great handheld equipment. That's, Husqvarna. That's what I use. I use Makita yep. stuff. So. I, I I use Milwaukee. Don't judge me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I use their uh, their battery powered. Um, grease gun. Yeah. That's a game changer. Yep. So when I was building um, my chicken Taj Mahal this uh, this spring, I went out and I got sick and tired of hammer and nails. And so I got their um, uh, electric framing nail, nail gun. And uh, that thing weighs a ton. But oh, man, is it a game changer? It went 24 hours on different charges for me using it all day. And like I said, if you were to look back five years ago, that didn't, it, right. it may have existed, but it was... A brick, right. the battery died, wasn't reliable. Mm. Now, it's just kind of next level. Um, so, yeah, I see where the industry is changing with that with electric equipment, both from a standpoint of advancements in technology, but also from regulation. I know we haven't seen it a lot mm. here in Kansas, but right. Dallas is is going through those motions right now, Florida, California. Mm. Um, so it's neat that you're keeping that in mind to, to stay on top of the. the yeah, curve. I would love to go out and purchase a brand new battery powered stand on mower, but it's a little pricey yeah. at this point. Yep. So it doesn't really make financial sense at this point. So yeah, some of our customers down in uh, Fort Myers, Florida, it's Parsons Lawn and Landscape. Their almost entire fleet is mean green. Zero turns. Yeah, no, and, I, I've heard of them. That's definitely one that I've kind of had an eye on. Yep, and they're, they're pricey, but I know they yeah. say that they're the, one of the best investments they've ever made. Wow. Okay. Um, especially when with the the gas prices increasing and yeah. and all that, the uh, they've been able to to make some good money off of it. So, uh, so with that, I know we were talking a little bit beforehand, and you moved to New Mexico. You like the outdoors. You like to go hu- not hunting, but you like to go hiking and and be in nature. And you said one of your favorite things was to kind of be outside and be in nature as you were, you're working now. Um, what do you kind of find the most joy in of your day-to-day activities in the lawn landscape industry? What do I find the most joy in? Um, I definitely just enjoy being outside. And so uh, just soaking in the sun, 
and getting sweaty. Like people ask me all the time, like, how can you work in this hundred degree weather? And like, if I was out on a picnic, I I wouldn't like it. But I guess I just get in the mind zone of uh, the mindset that I'm I'm at work, mm-hmm. and so I just kind of embrace uh, that feeling of getting dirty, getting my hands dirty, um, getting sweaty. Like that's just there's something about that that just kind of is is liberating in a way. Yeah, liberating and, just, and rewarding. Feels right? really good, very rewarding. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yep. Get, getting dirty, working with your hands and, and earning it. That's what I always used to call it is did you earn it. Did you earn it today? Um, you can definitely go out and do that really fast in this, in this industry. So, definitely. so I know you said that this is your third, fourth, fourth year in the lawn landscape industry. This is, this is my fourth year. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are some strategies that you, strategies that you have implemented to continue to grow? Cause I know you've grown pretty rapidly. Yeah, I was very lucky Lucky early on. I had a customer reach out to me that I knew previously from many years ago, and he had like 10 lawns for me. And so as I was starting, it was just like, okay, I'm just, I'm going to see how this goes, kind of start small. And then it was like, bam, I had 10 lawns with a couple others. I was like, okay, I can do this uh, just as a part-time thing. And so just doing good work, and and word of mouth really is is the best way that I've grown. So I I, I got this customer, and then I started doing uh, their neighbors, and I ended up doing like eight lawns in this one like really fancy neighborhood. And so then I just kind of slowly grow that way. Um, I get into another nice neighborhood, and just doing a good good work quality work, um, and really caring for the customers is is the best way that that I've grown. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. So what equipment did you start out with and what equipment are you running today? Yeah, I started out the first mower that I bought uh, four years ago was a Honda push mower. Oh, yeah. Um, 21 inch. And I still have it. I use it when I need to. I try not to use it. Um, And then I realized that if I'm going to really grow and do this for real, I needed to get something a little bit bigger, a little nicer. Um, And so I, I took another step. And I ended up getting more, I got a, a, a sit down riding lawnmower, a zero turn. And it was a, it was more of a residential, a uh, homeowner type unit. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a great mower, but I just realized fairly quickly as well. I was going to kind of beat this thing up and I needed to get something a little nicer than that. And so I actually found a, a good used um, commercial type mower. It's a, I use Skag. Uh, lawnmowers, and I've really got lucky in finding this uh, this stand-on mower, and used it for the first three years, and it was a money maker for yeah. me. Um, and now I have two newer Skag mowers. Uh, shout out to the to my dealer out in Benton, Don Hoover. <laughs> uh, he he treats me really well, keeps my mowers running, and I I try to do uh, all the maintenance on it, and just try to keep them. In good condition. Uh, so, yeah, I started with a push mower, graduated to a re- more of a residential, and now I'm uh, using two Skag stand-on mowers and uh, I steel, uh, steel trimmers and blowers. And uh, so, yeah. There you go. The uh... it's, been, it's been a fun fun journey in that regard. And I kind of have a, a problem with buying new equipment. And yeah. uh, my wife doesn't always enjoy seeing the stuff that, enters into the garage sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like buying cool, fancy little, even like accessories for, mm-hmm. for lawn stuff. So Yeah, I saw those green racks on your trailer. Oh yeah, so. <laughs> use, use green racks accessories for my trimmers and blowers and they work really well. Yeah, what's interesting is you and a previous guest we had on here, who I know you um, said you reached out to Zach Lewis, you're both SCAG guys. Okay. Uh, so you get just... Like riding, riding the tiger. That's what you guys like. So yeah. The uh, and I'm going to take a guess. So you said you went from a push mower to more of a residential mower, and then you graduated to Skag. Mm-hmm. We're in Wichita, so I'm going to say it was either a Hustler Raptor or a Bad Boy. It was neither. Oh man, it was a Cub Cadet. Oh man. Well, hey, we all got to start. <laughs> no, they're they're good. They 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 and definitely. They're have- they're coming out with some nice 
uh, commercial. Yeah. Have you seen Grasshopper's well. new stand on mower? I have seen it on YouTube, and I I, I want to see it in person. That thing. I, is I'm a interested beast. in that. Yeah. Yep. So the uh, they're just up in Mound Ridge, Kansas. Did yeah. You know that? Yep. Hustler as well. Yeah. Hustler's out in Heston. Yeah. There, there's there a there's actually a Hustler mower that I've got my eye on. It's a suit. I saw it at uh, GIE. Well, I didn't go. I just saw it on YouTube. Uh, there's it's called the Surf Pro. It's gotcha. super lightweight stand on machine. And so I'm trying to get away from push mowing at all. I have a couple lawns that require push mower just because the gate is uh, 30 inches or less. So, and, and that that one is is on my eye for yeah, the for, uh, for my second truck. Stand ons are, in my opinion, the way to go. Oh yeah, they're they're so nice. The uh, the other day, um, we were out with a customer, and uh, um, he challenged me to see if I could still. I could still operate a machine, and so the uh, he had a new Toro stand on, and uh, that thing was so slick and uh, whip around, getting all those tight corners. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I definitely see where you're going with stand ons there. Yeah, I would never not have a stand on mower at this point. Yeah. Um, so with that, it sounds like you you said like you started off push mowing, you found a, a, a little step up, and then you found a big step up, and you you like to find accessories and, and technology to kind of help you advance yourself as you grow and your company grows what are some other technologies that you've leveraged moving forward you don't have to say lawn buddy well, definitely knows lawn buddy <laughs> oh yeah for sure it's been a game changer for me yeah but what other technologies have you started to kind of embrace to help you get ahead of the curve when it comes to that yeah so before i started using lawn buddy i was using quickbooks which i still use quickbooks um and uh my brother-in-law is my accountant so Shout out to him, Josh Menard. He uh, he helps me out with that. And so uh, along with that, I have two employees at this point. And so finally getting getting them more official uh, through payroll. And so just automizing all the back end stuff has been a game changer. And so Lawn Buddy especially, uh, I started using it last year and just um, implementing the jobs, the routes, um, the invoicing just the scheduling of it all. Once it's in place, it's just, it's something I don't have to continue to think about uh, writing things on paper or using Evernote. I mean, I like using technology. I was doing all these different things and I had things all over the place. And so to have everything in one place is super helpful. Yeah. And then with the, uh, with my employees that I have now, they can use their um, app and I can assign their, their crew to them, and they go knock it out. And I'm here today on a Tuesday while they're out mowing lawns, and, mm-hmm. and, and it's great. Yeah. I'm really loving it. That's, that's what we, we like to hear. That's our, our whole point is free you up so you can do more things and work on growing your business instead of working in your business. Uh, so actually, on that same note, I know you just upgraded to tier, so now you'll also be able to track their their time. So yeah. with that exclusive package, you'll be able to track um, not only the time on job, but their their total hours. So that way, payroll should be a lot easier for you to do. Yeah, so, definitely. Yep. So with that, what are some of your your goals over the next I don't know, three years to continue to grow your company? Mm-hmm. Um, definitely trying to get my crew to have a full schedule right now they're part-time and so uh, being able to to trust them that they're going to do a good job and for me to kind of go out and get new jobs is is a goal um so that i'm not mowing lawns every day yeah what uh, what kind of mix for like do you have a goal for commercial accounts and residential accounts or anything like that no so i kind of got into the commercial game last year and I kind of realized that it wasn't right for me. Um, I've got a good friend who likes doing the duplexes and apartments and things like that. And so I ended, I found a, a contract for, for about 20 duplexes. And it just, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah. It's part of the reason why I got into lawn care was because I just love doing it. And I would show up to those properties and be like, what, what am I doing here? And so I, I like I, I do a couple commercial accounts still where it's like just local businesses, local owner or I get to know. Um, but I really would 
have found that the doing residential and really like prime, like premium residential houses mm-hmm. is really what I enjoy doing and, and we're good at. So yeah, growing residential, getting into a neighborhood and kind of just taking over yeah. that neighborhood. So I don't have to drive very far. Um, all that work is right there. And yeah, getting to know the the homeowners. I really enjoy that part of it. And that's maybe some of my ministry background is uh, being able to care for them and do things uh, outside of lawn care that maybe other lawn care businesses don't really think about. Like that's something I, I can have in the back of my mind. I want to take care of these people. Yeah. Um, so I'm providing a service for them and I want to do the best that I can. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's the, the right mindset to have. I think if you go into it and not think you're just there to serve one single purpose, but that there's opportunity and all sorts of things that you can genuinely help people, Yeah. but also make a, an honest living um, from. Yeah, I and think so like one thing is um, I've had a, a couple customers reach out to me at the beginning of the year and, and ask if I was going to raise the prices um, as he was expecting with the, the prices of everything going up. And as I've gotten to know this specific person, um, he was one of those guys that I knew kind of his story and what he was doing. And uh, I didn't raise the price on his lawn. I just wanted to give him a break um, as he was maybe experiencing rate increases all over in other places. I wanted to be able to, to care for him as well not and so and for other for other customers i have raised the rates um and it's kind of a a case-by-case basis so Mm -hmm. as i've gotten to know them uh that's something i can kind of take into consideration be like okay this this person will be okay if i raise the rates and this person it it will be a good thing for both of us yeah absolutely so i know we talked a lot about um where you're at now but if you could go back and give yourself some advice when you were starting out if you could go back and visit yourself four years ago, what would you what would you do differently, or what advice would you would you give yourself? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure I would do anything differently. Uh, I, I listen to podcasts all the time, watch YouTube videos, lawn care guys, and I'm always trying to learn things. But I mean, I would say the greatest um, educational tool is just to experience it. And so I don't know if I would change anything because. It was through those things that I, I learned, oh, I need to do this this way. Uh, so just learning from experience was, was, I mean, there's no other way to do it, I would think. Yeah. Of course, I wish I had better equipment from the beginning. <laughs> like, I wish I would have been able to go out and buy a brand new Skag stand-on. Yeah. But I wasn't able to. it, And so I guess in, in, those, in those ways, I wish I could have done that. Um, but and then I guess the other thing I would I guess to really answer your question would be to really automate things from the beginning. I see. Not write things in a notebook or not use Evernote on my phone. So I still do that just f- to kind of brainstorm ideas, um, but to really l- get laser focused on the business side of things. Yeah, that would be the the one major thing I would go back and do. But I learned from it, so. Yeah. And now I can appreciate using Lawn Buddy yeah, and absolutely. things like that. Yeah, so one of the things that we always try to coach people on, whether they use software or not, is to think about your business and, and putting those processes and pieces of equipment or technology in place sooner rather than later because oftentimes it's kind of like if you're getting ready for a race and you keep putting it off knowing that the big race is coming up and then the day of the race – you can't cram in all the things that you should have done to be prepared, and then you're unprepared going into the race. And so what we try to do is get people to, it's best to implement these tools, it's best to implement these processes now versus later because you're going to be busy later. Mm-hmm. Um, you went from right. eight or ten lawns to probably doubling um, quite mm-hmm. rapidly, and you know from doing things on pen and paper or even when it comes to your, like your organization and your standards for your employees, you're kind of just flying by the seat of your pants, and that works for, for some people but not for, for everyone. And so you should really think out your growth, and then once you reach that level, our job, right, w- with you as a, as a partner, 
is how do we think about your next your next goal, that next level, and how do we put systems in place through software and through processes now so you can reach those goals? Because that's what we want to do. We want to enable businesses to reach their goals and get to the next level because we believe that small to medium-sized business owners are the ones who who deserve these tools the most, not larger publicly traded or franchise companies, right? Mm -hmm. They'll always have resources. We want to make room to, to make it to where um, I mean, 14% of the lawn and landscape industry makes up the majority of the revenue. And so for the entire lawn and landscape industry. And so how do we make it to where folks that are in your shoes can capture more of the market? Um, and we believe it's through technology and through business owners like yourself who are willing to learn, willing to adapt and really push forward. Um, and so it's a joy to, to always work with you and to, to watch yeah. you grow because you do. And that's what we see year over year is we see business owners who grow and you're in that growth mindset. So with that, I know we've talked about business a lot. I know uh, a little bit earlier we were talking about some, some passions that we have outside of the lawn and landscape industry, but what are some things that that you like to to do to, to reset or to just have a little bit of fun around the, the Wichita area? Yeah. So I've got two kids and they're both getting older and they're, uh, I have a daughter who's in seventh grade and a son who's in third grade and they both love sports. And so right now uh, they're both playing soccer and uh, my, my daughter's on a club soccer team. My son plays through the Y. And so being able to go out and enjoy a weekend watching my kids play soccer is really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've played sports my whole life, played every sport that I possibly could and so being able to see my kids do that now is is fantastic. And so in the winter, my son plays basketball. That's probably his favorite. And I w- I'm able to coach his little basketball team in the winter, which is another fantastic thing about lawn care is that I have the winters off. And I've grown my business to where I, I'm able to take the winters off. I don't have to get a second part-time job. So I can coach his basketball team. Um, and just be available for for my family and, and my kids uh, is is definitely number one on the list. Um, and like I said, I love playing sports, so it's hard to get out there now. But playing golf is something I've done since I was a little kid, and I love to do that more. And hopefully, I will get to that point where I can play a little bit more, um, which kind of leads into a second passion of mine that kind of overlaps mm-hmm. the long hair business. And um, when I was a little kid, I my parents were fantastic. They let me do this. But I was able to, to use our little push mower, drop it all the way down to its lowest setting, and I cut out three putting greens in our backyard. We had a pretty good-sized yard. And so I had like a three-hole course in my backyard. That's awesome. I dug out three holes. Um, they didn't care. And I, I mowed the lawn when I was a kid, uh, which is when I realized, man, I really enjoy working in lawn care. Um, and so one of the goals I have in my own personal backyard, but also potentially, it's kind of a wild idea uh, for my a very niche business idea is to install putting greens with real turf, not not synthetic turf. I know that's pretty popular. Um, so I don't know if this is too crazy of an idea, but I would love to have a, a niche business where I uh, install a putting green and then take care of it. So I actually, it just came in the mail right before I drove over here. I saw the UPS driver drop it off. And this is one of the reasons my wife uh, doesn't always <laughs> enjoy this part. But I bought a, a, a greens mower. A, a, a re- real mower, a yeah. real mower, a cylinder mower, and um, and it's actually speaking of creation care environment, it has no motor on it. It is a, it's actually a professional greens mower, but it's in it does not have an engine, so it's all uh, manual. Um, but it's like high quality. I know yeah. you can get some of those like Scotts or Fiskers or whatever. You can get a real mower at Home Depot. But this one is like a professional grade. And so I, I'm installing, I'm starting in my own backyard. I'm installing r- currently uh, my own 
putting green. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm going to be real mowing it. And I'm going to see how it goes. I know I'm not doing it USGA uh, quality-wise. There's definitely specific ways to do it with all the levels of dirt and sand and all that stuff. But I'm getting ready to plant creeping bent grass, which is pretty standard greens mow, uh, grass. And I'm going to be doing that. And I, I've reached out to a couple of my current customers because there's a couple that have backyards that would be perfect for it. And so we'll see how it goes on my own yard. But I would love to to get into maintaining golf greens mm-hmm. with my new real mower that I just got. Yeah, so. that'd be fantastic. We'll have to introduce you to one of our buddies, uh, Ben Hartman. It's, he's, he doesn't maintain uh, a golf course, but he's the groundskeeper over at uh, um, the Wichita Wind Surge. Um, and so they all almost exclusively do real mowers, yeah. and he's one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to turf um, and turf right maintenance on. with real, mower, real mowers. So we'll have to get you out there. Yeah, and, I went out and uh, just randomly stopped by the, the McDonald golf course, and I talked to the superintendent there for a little bit. And I've been watching tons of videos on YouTube, uh, learning all about it. And I feel like I'm getting in over my head with it, but it's definitely a passion that I have. Yep. I would love to, I want to at least try it. If it doesn't work, then I'll have my own backyard that I can play with. But I would love to kind of turn that into a very niche business venture. I feel like there's a market for it. Yep. I'm I don't sure. know if, I don't know if I'm going to be the right one to do that, but I'm going to try. Especially here in Wichita, I think that you're, it's, it's a great place to, to test that, that idea. And hey, every, every great business idea starts off as a crazy. I mean, one, what, who, someone once said, what if you had a computer in your pocket? Right. What if you could take a picture with your cell phone? What yeah. if, what if, what if? Right. And I'm here to say, you need to cultivate the what if and the excitement because that's how you grow. That's how you, you start working on your business instead of in your business. Is how can you diversify yourself, get to the next point to provide real tangible value and do things that you love. And if you're stuck with the status quo of, I'm just going to keep with maintenance. I'm just going to keep doing it this way. You're going to get behind the curve. You're mm-hmm. going to get left behind. So always harness that curiosity and always just ride that wave. It, sometimes you're going to wipe out. Sometimes it's not going to be great. But the other times you're going to hit some some real hum, home runs. I also use like four sports analogies there. That was very impressive. Nice. I went from surfing nice. to golfing yeah. to, to to baseball, but just like continue to harness that and continue to experiment and be curious. And I think that's where you see people who really set themselves apart is always wonder, always be excited, always kind of pursue your passions because as long as you're happy and you're making a living, then nothing else matters. Yeah. So, but I think it's a great idea. I think, especially in backyards, I mean, you have a lot of people with putting greens. You have a lot of people who, especially who live around the golf courses. Right. So one of the things I'm going to do, once I kind of figure it out, if it's going to be a legit thing or not from my own experience with it is, yeah, go to the country clubs and network there and see if there might be some people that would be interested. I know there would be people interested. Um, I think the part that's, I think my, I might be getting in over my head is, the, is how often greens need to be a uh, real mode, um, and the care that goes into those It's different than just normal grass. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yep. I, I haven't, I don't think I've told anyone besides my wife this, but I also get on really, I'm sure he probably can, can attest to this and like 90% of the lawn buddy staff, I get on really weird tangents and I get really excited about things and like auctions. Like there's, I have four copy machines here at the office Mm. just because I find really great deals on these auction sites. And I'm like, we need this. (laughs) Anyways, one of those, Hey, I feel you. Yeah. One of those was, so I have a big, um, English Mastiff. His name's Bosco and, uh, he kills our backyard all the time because he, Mm. (laughs) he can, when he goes to the bathroom, that boy goes to the bathroom. I tell you what the, uh, and so he over fertilizes the lawn and burns (laughs) it and kills it. And so I started looking into, okay, what are some, what are some types of grass that I can put down that are more resistant to a flipping horse that lives in my backyard? Uh, and uh, I found, uh, have you ever heard of clover lawns? Yeah. Yeah. And so it used to be like the status quo. That was the go-to. Everyone had a clover lawn. Yeah. And uh, I was about to plant a, a clover lawn in my backyard until I looked at the 
um, like the germination rate and how quick it can spread. And I realized I would destroy my neighbor's lawns mm. eventually because it would creep into their yeah. their backyards. But uh, that was one of my exciting, passionate um, things that I, I nerded out on for a while. Now I'm going to yeah. research this. This You said it's creeping bent. Bent grass. Bent grass. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm going to have to research into that. because Most lawns or most golf courses use creeping bent grass. Mm-hmm. Oh, the other part is we, we just moved to a new house and we have a really big backyard. We live on an acre. There's a creek that runs in the backyard. It's really pretty. So I've got the prime place for it. We don't have a fence. Um, and so in the main big part of the lawn, I'm going to, well, I'm overseeding it right now for the winter because I don't want it to be brown, but I've killed off all the Bermuda and the um, the weeds and I really want to plant zoysia grass. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I've heard of it. It's I'm my favorite. It's my it. favorite grass type because it gets really thick and you can mow it low, so you can uh-huh. real mow it. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be a pseudo fairway into my bent grass green. It's going to be a soccer field, football field, ultimate frisbee field. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's your your utility your utility backyard. Yeah. Right? It's going to switch down, get your Swiss Army knife of whatever sports you want. And, uh huh. So. And I think a lot of the golf courses around here are moving to zoysia grass. Oh. Because it needs less water. It uh, is more disease resistant. Yeah, less water, you had me sold. The Midwest, I hate this drought that we've been in this year. Oh, man. We, July has been brutal. Yeah. How many days above 100 did we did we hit there for? We had a streak going. I think it was well oh, over a month. We were over 100 degrees. Uh, definitely. I feel um, like it. The, everyone in Florida who's listening right, right now is like, shut up. You don't complain about the heat. <laughs> but you guys have heat hard. and moisture, so I don't want to hear it. So with that, we have a lot of businesses that are starting out that are in your exact spot where you started four years ago. I know you said that one of the things that you would do earlier was get more organized, get more optimized. Is there anything for these young business owners? Maybe this is their first year. They're getting hit with the recession. They're getting hit with all these. What are some pieces of advice you could give that give them either from a mindset or a, a resilient standpoint, or even how you operate and how you interact with customers to make sure that you're continuing to grow your business and you don't get overwhelmed? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is just doing the very best that you can, like the best quality that you you can do and caring for your customers. And one of the things that I'm still learning and wish that I did better was communicate with my customers for sometimes very specific things. Um, but communicate well with your customers. Go above and beyond. Do the little things that they're not paying you to do. Um, and, and just do the very best job that you can, and you're going to grow. If you're doing good work, there's countless jobs out there for you. Uh, And so just just work hard and and do good work. I mean, that would be my biggest advice. Yeah, that's good. And I think the communication piece is huge because it's one thing that, I mean, we started the company around trying to bridge the communication gap between homeowners and business owners because homeowners don't realize that you're on your mower mowing all day and you can't just answer the phone whenever they call and vice versa. We as business owners don't realize that, Hey, these homeowners are working nine to five jobs too. When they get home, they're with their family. And so we need to figure out a way to, to better communicate. Um, So I think you're spot on with the communication, especially Mm -hmm. in today's day and age where Americans we strive for instant gratification in everything we do, right? We push a button and we get pizza in 45 minutes. We push a button and you get your groceries delivered. Mm -hmm. Um, And so how you can find that way to better communicate with your clients, whether that's through technology or not, is going to be crucial because there are alternatives and you can't afford to not be that alternative. So with that, towards the end of our our podcast, I always like to do a, a nice, fun thing. Um, which I say, a, a would you rather question? Okay. All right. Are you ready? I think so. Okay. Um, so would you rather have no joints in your arms or no joints in your legs? Meaning you cannot bend your, your arm or you can't bend your leg. Which would you rather, which would you rather choose? Hmm. Well, I have arthritis in quite a few of my joints and it is horrible. Mm-hmm. 
especially in my hip. So I'm trying to think. If I didn't have joints in my legs, those joints wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Smart. So that would that I'm kind of leaning towards my legs, um, and it would be really hard to eat and do things if I didn't have an elbow. This is true. So I think, but then if I didn't, well, I don't know. Yeah, I th- I, w- I I would say legs, no joints in my legs. I I think I would have to go with that that same theory, but because pirates are making a comeback, and you just walk around like you're a pirate constantly. <laughs> having, having no joints in your arms you'd probably pretty much have to just be a boxing coach or something at that point in time so yeah um, but hey thank you so much for for joining us today um i really enjoyed our, our conversation and, and getting to know you and watch your, your your business grow um as always if anyone has any questions feel free to comment or below or send us a message and then if anyone wants to reach out to you to connect with you what's the best way that they can do that yeah, I have, I kind of do personal and business. I have just my personal is Aaron Tiffany um, on Instagram, Facebook, and then my business, Creation Care ICT, right here in Wichita. There you go. And we'll link those below as well. So if you guys have any questions, you want to reach, reach out, feel free to go ahead and smash that button. And we look forward to seeing you guys in a week. We'll talk to you later. We'll talk to you later. We'll talk to you later.